All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll begin, Coach Simmons, with the opening statement and then open up to questions. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, hope everyone's doing well. And uh, as always, I'm excited about this week's opportunity to uh, continue to uh, grow this program and um, you know, continue to push toward the LCS playoffs. Um, we had a big win last week against a really good Southern football team. Um, I thought that our team really accepted the challenge and really played probably as physical a football game as we played all season. Um, a lot of big hits, um, running backs ran extremely hard uh, defensively, you know, really held a, a high power rushing attack to a um, you know, respectable night when you take away the quarterback runs. Um, obviously, whenever you have a quarterback that's that uh, dynamic. It's uh, difficult to contain them. And, uh, but the biggest thing, we didn't give up the biggest explosive plays for touchdowns. We gave up a, a few big runs, but we were able to get them on the turf and make them snap it again. And obviously, we were able to come away with three big turnovers. So um, all in all, I thought it was a complete performance um, in all three phases. I thought special teams, aside from the uh, opening kickoff that they returned across the other side of the field, I uh, thought our guys covered well. Um, Jose uh, continues to make kicks. And uh, Padua continue to punt the ball extremely well. And so, again, uh, guys are playing good ball right now, but obviously we've got to continue to and build on it because we've got a really good Alabama State team that we're traveling to this week that's playing good football. Um, you know, they're 6-3 they're, uh, and, three and um, you know, best record they had in a long time. So, again, great opportunity for this football team, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to going up to Birmingham and hopefully coming back with another big win to continue this uh, this playoff push. Hey, good morning, Coach. Hey, good, Gerald. Good morning. Um, you you said that y'all played a you know a complete game. Um, and that's probably the first one of of the season. How encouraging is that going into you know Alabama State and just the remainder of the season? That now that you see a team can play a complete game, they can play good offense, good defense, and they can cut the penalties. How encouraging is that for the remainder of the season? Well, that's very encouraging, and that's what we're capable of. Right. So the challenge is to to, you know, to match it and, and exceed it. Um, you know, we talked all week about sending the seniors out the right way, uh, about playing a really good football team that was dangerous. And, uh, you know, all the things that we uh, spoke about, the importance of the guys really internalized it and, and put it to good use on Saturday. So uh, this week is about doing the same thing. And uh, they understand what's at stake uh, and understand that we have a really good football team that we're going to play that's going to be inspired and, and going to be excited about playing us up there. So uh, again, you know, got to have a great week. You know, had a pretty good night last night, a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, uh, but we got to stack three more great days on top of each other and, and feel good about going into the game on Saturday uh, with the confidence to, to continue to play our best ball. Coach, I, I guess, you know, uh, last week, you know, you, you talked about, or even just, you know, after the game on Saturday, you talked about, you know, the guys wanting to obviously buy in for, for a postseason push. And, you know, you've seen that. Have you seen their drive just increase, you know, week by week as they continue to rattle off wins and they continue to get hot, find that momentum? Uh, are you seeing that grow just in them and their desire to to want to be able to, to stay hot, you know, as, as we continue seeing you guys, you know, rattle off win after win? Well, I think what we see uh, is a group of guys that are committed to excellence, you know, and, and that's our motto. Um, and we know that to, to, to achieve excellence, we have to chase perfection. And so um, we haven't played a perfect game yet, right? And so for us, I mean, until we do that, we got to continue to work. And I think that's what this team understands. Um, they, they understand what sacrifice looks like, uh, the commitment that it takes to play at a high level week in and week out. And, and we really – have a goal and a mission to, to prove to everyone that we're one of the top football teams in the country. And so uh, as long as we keep that focus, uh, keep that drive and determination and, and work consistently in that, uh, the success will follow us. And so I think that's what I'm most proud of about this, this group is that they, they understand what it takes and, uh, and we got to just keep pushing, can't get complacent, um, can't rest on our laurels. We have to continue to push towards that mark. And uh, if we do that, uh, I think the playoffs will take care of itself. And coach, just knowing, you know, you talk about that playoff bid, just knowing that the, the margin of error is, is kind of low. You know, you 
it, you really have to win these last two games and y'all stack wins, y'all on seven game winning streak. Well, is that something that you're kind of preaching to your team that, you know, the margin, the margin of error is low if you want to extend your season? Well, we've been honest since the very beginning. <clears throat> uh, we know that nationally, uh, the SWAC, uh, MEAC typically don't get the respect of our peers that we deserve. And so uh, there, there are a lot of questions about the quality of competition um, in our leagues, you know, um, often, more often than not. And so for us, you know, we, we knew that we would probably have to run the table to, to legitimately have a chance to, to make the LCS playoffs. Um, you know, we wanted to make, we want, we want the decision to be a lot easier to potentially pick a nine and two SWAC team over maybe a six and five or seven and four team from one of the, the quote unquote power conferences of FCS, you know, the Missouri Valley, the Colonial, um, some of those conferences that, that big, big sky, um, that typically get three, four teams in. And so, um, some good teams in, the, in this conference, some really good players some really good coaches. And, um, but we knew, or we felt that we would need to take care of business every Saturday after, in order to start to, to really legitimately have a chance. And when you look at the fact that our two losses are to um, an undefeated Jackson State team that's ranked in the FCS top five and a one loss North Carolina team uh, that's, I think, clinched or just about to clinch the ACC Coastal Division Championship. Um, I think our resume speaks for itself after that. So, but we, we know what's at stake and uh, we have to just continue to play good football and, and again, make it very, very uh, enticing for the selection committee to look at our body of work and, and the fact that we have a nine game winning streak, if, if that's the case, um, 15 game home winning streak that dates back three whole seasons and one of the top wide receivers in the country, one of the best defensive players in the country, one of the best special teams units in the country. Um, I, I think that resume will be strong enough to, to warrant in that large playoff bid. Hey, Coach, uh, keep things up here. Uh, this game in Montgomery, the 100 is supposed to be there. We also are going to have a very likelihood of having a large alumni presence. What kind of advantage does that give you as a team to have a potentially like large showing from the fam you faithful, maybe larger than normal? Yeah, it means it means a lot. Uh, it means that the Rattler Nation is behind this football team. Uh, it means the March 100 is behind this football team. Uh, our administration is behind this team. And that's really important to us as coaches. It's important to our players, um, everyone within the program, to know that we'll have that type of support there in Montgomery. Um, I think everyone's getting excited about what this, this football team uh, is growing into. You know, there are a lot of questions at the beginning of the season about how good we really were. Um, I think lately we've shown that we really are. And then people are back excited about uh, what we can do on the football fields on Saturday afternoon. So uh, we, we look forward to seeing a, a great crowd there. Uh, we know they're coming from Florida, from Alabama, from Atlanta. Um, uh, excited to have the March 100 there. And uh, it's going to be a great atmosphere. You know, we're really, really looking forward to, to the opportunity that's before us um, this coming Saturday. And then, Coach, another question from me, um, of course, Alabama, Alabama State, uh, they're surging just like y'all. Um, y'all on a seven-game winning streak. They won three straight. Just tell me, uh, just kind of give me, you know, kind of maybe maybe the importance of, you know, keeping y'all, you know, streak going against a team that has experienced recent success this season. Yeah. You know, like I said, SWAC's a really good conference, and uh, that's some good football team. So, they're one of those teams. They're, they're really strong defensively. Um, they have a top three uh, rated defense in the conference. And so <clears throat> a great challenge for our offense to see if we can do what needs to be done uh, to effectively move the ball, to protect the ball, uh, get first downs, and, and hopefully put points on the board. Uh, defensively, uh, we're going to face another athletic quarterback. And, uh, you know, we got um, hit last week a few times by losing contain. So got to do a really good job, a better job this week of keeping contained uh, and do as well, a, a, you know, a better job of, again, keeping those guys uh, from those explosives that result in touchdowns. And so, uh, again, looking forward to the challenge. We Beating good teams only strengthens our resume. And this is another team with a winning record. They will finish with the winning record regardless of what happens the last two games of their season. And so, again, uh, the fact that we're able to go in and, and potentially beat a, a team with a winning record um, in November 
I think really you know, it strengthens our case uh, for the FCS playoffs. Coach, excluding one time, ball security seemed to be something that was stressed in the Southern game. How, how have you been able to get that to be something that has been uh, something we've seen on the field just to go from like, hey, you're stressing it to being something where we're actually seeing produced on the field where we only have one turnover on that kind of flunky play. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it, it's, it's what we stress, obviously, and it's, it's how we practice it. Um, I, I, crazy as it sounds, I, I'm not one that we don't do a lot of quote unquote ball security drills um, that just emphasize nothing but ball security. Um, because to us, every time you touch the football in practice, it's a ball security drill. And so we're constantly stressing the proper way to carry the football. Um, we're constantly on the quarterbacks about being smart with the ball. Um, and, and we work snaps uh, again, you know, all day, all practice long. We're a shotgun football team. And so the one fluke snap we had, you know, it, it, it happens maybe once throughout the season. Um, it's happened twice for us, once against Jackson and once last Saturday where the center rolls the ball back there. But uh, we've been pretty good with our snaps all season. And, and again, that was, I think an anomaly for TJ. Um, he's been he's been a really good snapper for us. And so, um, but we just got to continue to stress it. And the guys have continued to internalize that saying that ball security is job security. You put the ball on the ground, you will not play. Um, there was one situation late in the game <clears throat> Saturday on the last drive during the four minute where um, Jalen McLeod, you know, had a run, got tackled. We told him to get up slow because that's what we want to do in the four minute situation, let the clock run. And um, he laid down for a while. When he got up, the ball was laying on the ground. And so I made a huge point of emphasis to him at that moment. We don't lay the ball on the ground ever. Mm -hmm. Our job is to get up, hand the ball to the official, and then get back lined up, right? We never want the ball to touch the ground. We never want there to be a question about whether it was a fumble or not. You know, we don't want instant replay to have to, you know, make a determination of whether the ball came out prior to you getting down or not. Like, I, I don't even like that excuse. When the, if the ball's on the ground, you're coming out. Like they, they, they know me. The running backs know me. The receivers, they all know that the ball, if I look up, if you've run the ball, and when you get up off the ground, the ball is down there, you're coming out. And, and most of the time this season, it's, it's been down by contact. The ground has caused it. But, you know, that's just the importance of ball security to us. And the guys understand that mandate, you know, and, and even we do routes on that, keep the ball off the ground. And so if we continue to stress it and continue to, again, practice it the way we do and the guys um, – really take great pride in it, we'll continue to play good football. Because obviously when you play teams that <clears throat> are high-powered offense like Southern, you don't want to give them extra opportunities. Um, a team like, like Alabama State, who maybe hasn't had the offensive success that they maybe would, would like this year, you don't want to give them extra opportunities as well because, again, they could maybe jumpstart them. So uh, all, the, all, the, all that stuff ties hand-in-hand, hand, right? We have to play complementary football and protecting the football on offense and finding ways to get it on defense and being able to to win that turnover margin is um is something that really really strengthens our chance to be successful on game day. Coach, what are some of the intangibles that come into play as you make this push for the playoffs, but having to do so in your last two games on the road? Say say the first part again. Say Claire. The what, what what are some of the intangibles? What are some of the things that come into play? as you, you know, have to go on the road, trying to win this birth into the playoffs? Well, one, <clears throat> the, the focus that it takes to win on the road, right? You have to be locked in, disciplined um, in our approach. You know, we're, we're not in the confines of brag. We've shown three seasons that, you know, when we play home games, we're locked in. Whether it's homecoming, whatever the case may be, that we come in and play at a high level. And so we have to now show that we can do that when we travel on the road. So when we leave on Friday and drive up to Montgomery, are we focused in? Are we locked in? Um, are we having enough meetings, right? The, the, are the walkthroughs efficient? Um, you know, do we study our tips and reminders and all the little things that it takes to be successful and prepared for game day? Do we take those things seriously? And then um, just, you know, the, the, the obvious things when you travel on the road, you're playing in someone else's backyard. So, Rattler Nation won't be there as a whole, right? We will have a huge contingency of Rattlers in attendance with the March 100, 
but the vast majority of the crowd the, of the crowd Saturday will be Alabama State Hornets. And so the crowd getting up when it's when we have the ball on third down and them getting loud trying to disrupt us and make us maybe false start or make us, you know, lose focus. Can we stay dialed in to the snap count to those things and execute? Right. Can can we, you know, just handle all the the the, the variables and the distractions of playing on the road? And, and if we can do that, we give ourselves a, a great chance. And that's that to me, that's really the biggest part. Mentally, can we lock ourselves in to, to have the same approach um, on the road as we do at home and then be ready to face whatever adversities come with, with that transition? Coach, apologies if you've already been asked this, but when you're trying for an FCS playoff at large spot, do you feel pressure to play more complete games, put up style points, do stuff like that to try to get the committee's attention? Um, we, we, we just try to play clean football. Um, I, I don't want to go saying cut our nose, spite our face, right? And you go out for style points and you're throwing the ball, you know, when you're up by 14 because you're trying to go up by 21. And you throw a pick six and that's a seven-point game, right? Or, or you're trying to blitz more um, because you're trying to, you know, create a turnover or, or get more tackles for loss. And then, you know, they throw a, a slip screen or, you know, match protect, check, take a shot, and, and now we give up a cheap touchdown and it's a closer game. So for us, you know, we're going to let uh, the chips fall where they may. You know, I, the number one objective is to win football games. And we've shown that we can do that. We can win them close. We can win them in, in, in blowout fashion. Um, you know, so th to me, the style points are best served with winning. And so as long as we continue to win, um, we'll, we'll let the, 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 the voters determine if, if the, our style of play is, is sexy enough, um, so to speak. But I, I think when you look at an Xavier Smith and the, the year that he's had a wide receiver, when you look at uh, Isaiah Land, the Randy Buck Buchanan Award winner, um, you know, Chris Fadul, Jose Romo Martinez, you know, probably the best kicking combination uh, in America. And then just our body of work over the last, you know, really three seasons, uh, we've shown that we're a perennial power in FCS football. You know, nine wins, nine wins, and depending on what happens this year, potentially nine wins. I, I don't know many teams in America that can boast three straight seasons of nine wins. And so if anyone questions or doubts whether we're a dominant football team or whether we're one of the top teams in America, uh, clearly they're just biased or not paying attention. And so uh, not really worried about the style points. Um, I think our style is the fact that we're consistently showing that we're one of the most consistent teams in the country as far as wins and losses. So, um, But our, yeah, our job is to win the game, and that's what we're focused on doing on Saturday. A one-point win to me would be just fine, uh, a 21-point win. We'll be just fine. But at the end of the day, if it's a W, we'll take it. Coach, if you can speak to this, uh, family recruiting has just been different. I, I mean, this is the best I've ever seen family recruiting. And I've, I've gr you know, grown up a Rattler, family grad, all this great stuff. You guys, kudos to you and Coach Reyes. Y'all are killing it. How different has it been, if you can speak to it, as far as recruiting this year versus previous years? Uh, well, obviously it's not done. There's still a lot, lot of recruiting left to do, um, but we've been able to, to draw the interest of more high profile prospective student athletes uh, than maybe at any time uh, throughout our history here. And uh, one that's a testament to, to, to Coach Riz and what he's done coming in and just being aggressive on the recruiting trail. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're a three, four, five-star recruit. They've heard from Coach Riz. They've been invited to games. They've, a lot, many of them come to games. They've been invited to prospect camps. They've been written letters. They've been called on the telephone. Um, so all of those ways to, to connect and interact uh, with, with, with the, some of the pro top prospects in America, uh, he's been able to do that. And so, again, that's a testament to him, uh, you know, to the coaching staff because he can't do it alone. So continuing to assist him in our recruiting efforts. Uh, and uh, Kim Perry, you know, uh, our, our director of on-campus recruiting, you know, when they do get on campus, she does an amazing job of hosting these young men and showing them across campus, showing them the facilities, being personable with them. Uh, our, our hostesses, you know, everyone does a phenomenal job when we're able to get these young men on campus. You know, their parents come away impressed. Um, you know, when we play, we have a little informational game. We play with them. 
And when you see the head nods and you see the the uh oh moments of like, wow, I didn't know these these many interesting facts about FAMU. Um, it, it's really a great feeling. And so we obviously have to close it out. Um, we, we're, we're right there in the top five, top three, top 10 of a lot of high profile prospective student athletes. But uh, there, are no, there are no kudos or brownie points of finishing in the top three if you're not number one. So we have to make sure we close the deal with these young men. And um, I think we're going to be able to assign our fair share of really, really good football players this year. But um, and, and then obviously, lastly, the brand. Right, the family brand I think is as strong as it's ever been, um, and and that helps. Right, we're on TV more, um, we're you know, in the news for more for a lot of really good reasons. You know, uh, and, and I think all those things, our social media presence is amazing. You know, Josh and his team doing do a phenomenal job of of, of, of uh, producing content. You know, highlight reels from the games, um, memes. I mean, you name it, they they're on top of it. Right, we have a, a really top notch. Uh, communications department here within the athletics department. And that's that's a testament to Josh and the job that he and his team do. But um, again, we, it's just a great feeling to be at a place where you can't be in the conversation. And so again, for us, it's a matter of closing it, but uh, we really are excited about, about where we're headed uh, with our ability to attract some of the top athletes in America. I guess kind of following up on that, Coach, uh, you know, you're a young guy. You're not somebody who's been at this for decades and decades and decades. But even then, recruiting feels like it's changed so much over the last 10 years. Where, where do you feel like it's really evolved the most? Oh, uh, well, definitely social media, right? Uh, if you're not a person that embraces social media, you're going to be behind the eight ball when it comes to recruiting. Um, most of what we do is done um, online, whether it's through Twitter, Instagram. Um, there are a few guys that do Facebook, but not many. Uh, but, but primarily, you know, Instagram, Twitter, um, you know, Snapchat, TikTok, all those platforms. You have to be well versed in, right? You have to be able to connect with them that way. Um, Ten years ago, when you went to schools and and, and you were able to finally talk to prospective student athletes, you had your notepad and you took down the address, you took down their, their, their parents' names and you asked them for their cell phone numbers. Now you go in and you say, hey, what's your, what's your Twitter handle, All right? What, what's your Instagram feed? And that's, that's really what it, it boils down to because that's how they connect with us. So they reach out to us through social media. We follow up with them through social media and um, we do that more so than we maybe even talk on the phone with them. And, and so you really have to be committed to, understanding um, the social media climate. And so at low resource institutions like FAMU and many of our uh, you know, contemporaries, we don't have the, the, the manpower, the personnel to have a 30 staff recruiting department where they're the ones that are reaching out to these prospective student athletes and they're closer in age to them. So they're all proficient in social media. Well, here, Coach James Spady, you know, who's been doing this for almost 30 years, uh, better know how to use social media. Billy Rowe, uh, who's been who's been doing it for 30 years um, at the collegiate level for five, but has been doing who's been coaching ball for 30 years now, better know how to use social media because they are recruiting. They have areas. Coach Ryan Smith, you know, our defensive coordinator, you know, all those guys have to understand how important it is to to reach out to these guys, to, you know, shoot videos, to allow people to be in their in their personal lives in that space. And I think that's the biggest difference. We've always learned about the recruits. That's what recruiting is. We go out and we learn as much as we can about these young men. But 10 years ago, when I came out 20 years ago, we didn't know much about the coaches in their personal lives. You know, we might, we eventually find out their, their wives' names or we eventually got to meet their children once we signed with them. But in the recruiting process, we really didn't know. It was more so about them recruiting us. But now you better open up your home Right. You better be doing TikTok videos in the confines of your home, letting them see your family, letting them see your kids, you know, allowing them to see how personable you are. And if what you're saying to them during the recruiting process is genuine and authentic. And I think that's the biggest difference is that now it's a two way street. They recruit us just as, as, as hard as we recruit them. And um, we have to open ourselves up more in that space. And most of that's done through social media. Any more questions for Coach? 
Thank you. All right, guys, appreciate it. And uh, look forward to seeing you in Montgomery and see you next week. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it, Coach. All right. Thank you, everyone. I'll uh, send the recording over to you uh, shortly. Appreciate it, Josh. Appreciate it, Josh.